welcome Norm Hall to this episode of the Bell and Gossip Podcast. He's the VP of Strategy for RL Detment Company. Norm is well respected in the hydronics industry for his in-depth knowledge of products, systems, and designs. In his weekly blog, Monday Morning Minutes, Norm sets us straight on domestic pressure boosters and their role in a commercial building. So Norm, thank you and uh, welcome. Well, thank you and good morning to you. And besides the HVAC and hydronic engineers, we would certainly want to welcome all the plumbing engineers, since that's what we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> Fantastic. And I like that. That's great. Yeah. Well, you know, since we're going to talk about some uh, pressure boosters today, um, you know, domestic pressure boosters, you know, I, I want to kind of dive in. I've got a couple of questions, and I think the listeners kind of have in their mind when we're talking about boosters. You know, what kind of challenges do our engineers face today in regards to pressure boosters? I mean, we've got a, you know, it, it's basically its own little package system and, and I kind of want to, you know, sometimes I think that they worry about it, but then they're like, you know what, I got to trust somebody else, but they got There's probably some high level things they got to really think about when they're really considering a pressure booster for a building. Could, could you help me out with that? Sure. So when we are talking about pressure boosters, just to be clear, um, we are talking in, in general, for at least for this discussion, about buildings that do not have enough municipal pressure to get the correct pressure and flow to the fixtures at the top of the building. So we install a pumping system that includes controls and piping, and that system is designed by the plumbing engineer. There's a number of key issues today, I mean, with the engineers. Number one is simply the limited number of times, at least in Michigan and Ohio, that pressure boosters are required. Every project just about has plumbing on it. So engineers are very adept at determining loads and piping systems for the plumbing portion of the job. But when it comes to high rises in our territories, there are few applications. It's not an everyday thing. So one of the challenges they have is just the familiarity. It tends to be something new and rare. Um, another issue is, quite frankly, the changing of the guard. There's a lot of less seasoned engineers out there who are in some very important positions at the design phase for plumbing systems. And many of them have not ever done a high rise application or a pressure booster. So just like all of us, there are less people, less time, and now we have less experience. So that's a real challenge. And then of course, there is the changing codes and standards that go on. A lot of challenges for the person yeah, it's, who's designing uh, that plumbing it, system. <laughs> it does, I mean, for sure. And, and you've spoken to a couple of them there that I think are really interesting to me. And, and I think, um, you know, just like the, what the plumbing engineers are dealing with, uh, the mechanical engineers are dealing with it too, and that uh, changing the guard, the younger engineers, are more seasoned engineers that are in that facility too, and that gap in between. Um, you know, I, I, I look at this as that's where um, Norm Hall's uh, Monday morning minutes really help uh, bridge that as best as they possibly can, as well as reaching out to those local Bell and Gossett reps for assistance. What kind of things should they be considering, would you think, uh, when selecting a booster system? And, and, and maybe elaborate how that's different than just a simple pump selection that some people may be thinking about. Well, that's a mighty big question. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll start out, I mean, just basically, when you're selecting a pressure booster system, it's not quite the same as a hydronic pump. In hydronic pumps, we come up with the flow rate, and we normally have one operating, one standby. Sometimes there's a couple in parallel. Um, and then there's a differential pressure in the system, and that's pretty plain vanilla. That's the pump head. And then when we put a variable speed drive on it, we, we come up with a control head, and there's various ways of controlling the pump, but, but in all cases, we have to come up with a control head, and that control head's pretty constant. When we get into plumbing, it's a little bit different. The flow rate is pretty simple, but even that tends to be pretty large compared to the actual flow being used. Uh, the 
pressure has to be calculated that's required on the discharge of the system. And, uh, and then we have a varying suction pressure we have to deal with and come up with the minimum suction pressure. The challenge they have when selecting it is that the control head is actually varying as that suction pressure varies. So it's much more complicated than in a hydronic system. Uh, in our industry, a lot of people think of hydronics as the very complicated control solution and plumbing as just a simple thing that gets done. In reality, for pressure boosters, it's just the opposite. Controlling the pumps is, is key, and it's a widely varying load change with a varying control head. It's a um, control nightmare. For that reason, engineers continue to use packages. Sometimes I feel like, and, and correct if I'm wrong, sometimes when you look at plumbing, um, there's always that misnomer of, um, oh, it doesn't, you know, it, it's simple, it's straightforward. And, you know, I, I've always looked and, and loved telling people that, um, you know, there's really three things in a building that can close a building. And it's a, it's an elevator. If the elevator doesn't work, it's life safety. Uh, the fire or fire pumps, if they don't work, then you're shutting the building down. And the last one is if you can't get fresh water or flush a toilet in the building, that building loses its certificate of occupancy and you send people home. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty important stuff to make sure that we're really looking at these systems and not just making it as a simple system, you know, or simple uh, selection of a pump, um, which, I mean, you had a very good point there. I, I, I do appreciate that. And, you know, I, it's I, funny, I love, it's uh, funny, Kyle. It's uh, ahead, funny you say that I do a lot of presentations and, um, when I'm talking about pressure boosters with engineers uh, in some of the seminars we do here at Deppman Company, uh, one of the starting points I say is in the hydronic system, if the room temperature fluctuates by a half a degree one way or the other, people may not even notice it. But in a plumbing system with a pressure booster, if somebody can't flush a toilet or they get splashed with water when they flush a urinal, you know, or worse yet, the shower temperature fluctuates in one of the apartments, people complain. And the building owners and operators hear about it very quickly. So it's, it's a very good point you bring up. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, it is, I, I'm right there with you when I go around and do the same thing. It's fun to see that, uh, that questionable look on some engineers and they're going, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't really think of it that way, but you're 100% right. So, you know, that kind of brings me a little bit to some of the codes and standards, you know, um, and I don't want to get too terribly deep into it because it, it uh, the plumbing code is very interesting uh, to me. And, you know, I'm a little bit of a, a nut when it comes to codes and trying to decipher and really understand them. You know, can we can you elaborate a little bit on some of the challenges and maybe even some of the potential changes that may be coming in the future? Um, I heard something a little while ago, and I'm, I'm fairly certain it's true, is, you know, most of these booster systems are designed on what they call hunter curves, right? And the hunter curves were designed uh, a, a long time ago, but that's kind of where we're at still today. Maybe, I know that's a, a big question, maybe we start uh, small with some of the codes, and then maybe we can decipher a little bit on where we think it may be heading. Sure. So there's a lot of noise when we come to codes and standards. Most of the Codes are based on ASHRAE standards and ASPE standards that have come up through the years. And eventually, uh, the code mirrors one of those standards. Uh, an example, the Michigan Energy Code is based almost exclusively on ASHRAE 90.1 2013. Uh, the Ohio Energy Code is based on ASHRAE 90.1, but it's a previous year to that. It's not 2013. So the first thing is that the code changes from state to state depending on what version of various standards they're looking at. So the plumbing engineer has to make sure they understand the code that's going on in their state. Then there's a lot of noise out there. We have representatives, we have contractors, we have manufacturers, we even have engineers who are interpreting the code differently, maybe referring to a word or two in the code, um, not looking at the whole sentence. 
or maybe looking at a whole sentence but not looking at at the paragraph that's there and so there's a lot of noise about what the code actually says when this younger engineer who's designing this system has to be responsible for what's out there. It's important that they understand the code, and that's one of the things we do at Stepman Company is we do try to be on top of that and make sure we have conversation with the engineer when they're selecting the pressure boosters, making sure that they understand which part of which code applies. So that's that's a key point. I mean, today uh, variable speed is the way we go. I mean, and and the codes pretty much talk about variable speed. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to save a lot of energy. If it's a real high-rise building, there may not be that much energy to save if I have a constant suction pressure. But code requires variable speed. Beyond that, we're getting into how we control the pumps, where the sensors are located, um, what the setting is of the sensors, and then how quickly the system can respond. So there's a lot of things going on today, and then on top of that, there's different types of pressure boosters or different models of them, and each one has benefits and value for cost, and the engineer has to determine whether or not that's actually going to be what the owner wants. The value engineering uh, threat is always there today. Contractors are looking for an edge and they're looking for value engineering. So if an engineer is going to select a certain pressure booster at a certain cost and there's one that is less expensive, they need to be prepared to have looked at that while still taking care that they're meeting the code. So. There's a lot going on there. Um, when you talk yeah. about the future, it, it, from from what I've heard, there's a lot of a um, lot of smaller manufacturers out there, and then there's a lot of larger manufacturers out there. I mean, um, you know, Xylem, Bellagosset, uh, we we put out a a booster as well, and then you see some um, smaller shops in the area that um, you know may or may not necessarily have the customers' uh, thoughts and minds like um, like that and company does for sure. Um, it, it's really interesting and it sounds, I, I mean, basically the picture we're talking here is it can be fairly confusing for an engineer to, to really go through this. I mean, am I using a duplex booster where it's just two pumps or am I using a triplex booster and I need standby or it's a third, a third, a third on how it's split. Um, it, it, it's interesting to, to hear. I mean, it, it seems very consultative, um, on working with these engineers. To, to help them make that selection. So how would you say you see your role in helping those engineers or um, the, the um, sales associates that you have at Detman Company assisting those engineers so they select the right thing that both benefits the owner and keeps the engineer out of trouble? I mean, at the end of the day, the goal is not to get a call back on a, on a job because of something going wrong. Sure, there, it, it's interesting because uh, we're focused on a very small part of the entire building design. And we may understand as representatives or manufacturers that there might be four or five different series of models, and each one of those may have client benefits and costs. But when the engineer starts to design, the pressure booster is just one more piece of equipment they have to select. And all the little nuances of them are, are difficult for them to understand and ferret through in a short amount of time. So, I mean, they're looking, they're looking at which one do I need? And more importantly, which one does my client need? There's a cost to every feature and benefit. And as you add more and more features and benefits, that cost goes up. If the client isn't going to use the benefit that's in that booster system, then there's a good chance that uh, a lower priced unit will come out and the owner will be confused when offered that difference. 
one of the things we do is making sure that they pick the right system for the budget. We talk a lot about matching the client to the booster system. Oh, it, it's important to know if the client is all about first cost, they're not gonna own the building very long, they're not interested in long-term energy savings, the engineer needs to actually look at that and, and, and maybe forego some of the benefits that they see and get that cost value choice correct. Um, that's one of the things we do. Uh, in fact, we've created a plumbing website at Detman.com that walks the engineer through all of those benefits. And if the owner's not going to use them, basically the website says step down into the next lower tier. Um, Bell and Gossett makes a phenomenal product and they make several of them. Uh, there's four or five different model numbers and the most expensive one isn't the right one for everybody. So, so the thing we need to do is help them select the right booster system type to start out with. And then we have a lot of conversations about the number of pumps, as you said earlier, because as you add more pumps, there's a potential of saving more energy, but there's a little more complexity to the control. We guide them through the selection process. Uh, again, on our website, we actually have put a uh, small tool out there that walks them right through the discharge pressure and all of the items they need to consider, the suction pressure, all of the items they need to consider, and then um, even the tank selection uh, for the uh, discharge of the tank. Po pressure boosters don't need tanks, uh, but if you don't have a tank, the minute it turns off, water being incompressible, it's going to probably turn right back on. And do you really want to turn on a 20 or 30 horsepower pump because Mrs. McGillicuddy on the third floor got a drink of water? It's things like that <laughs> that you have to consider. I mean, it's uh, so that's what we do. We really walk them through. Uh, one of our core values is integrity, and we we feel strongly that we will give them the right solution, not necessarily the one that is most profitable for us. Um, that trust, I believe, we've earned, and um, and engineers use it, and they believe it. Yeah, no, I I, uh, I would 100% agree with you, Norm. I mean. You know, the, the more and more I listen and we're talking through this, you know, the thing that comes to my mind is, one, um, making sure that um, you work with your local Bellagossa rep um, who is, you know, average tenure, 68 years with, uh, with Bellagossa, who knows these systems inside and out and help guide you the right direction. But Number one, I will say, is, is it is around education and really understanding that, as well as trust. To, to your point, one of the things I'm going to suggest to every listener as listening to this is go to Detman.com, sign up for the Monday Morning Minute, go to the plumbing page, and uh, and really uh, make it easy. Uh, and which is the reason you know Norm has mentioned that plumbing page is real simple, straightforward. Click through it and and move on. I think all of us, you know. Norm and I both know that there's a lot of selections out there and whatever we can do to make the engineer's life easier, uh, we, we obviously should do. And making sure that, to your point, Norm, it's the right solution for the owner. Um, and maybe not necessarily the profitable or the most profitable um, unit, for instance, for, for the sale. So um, definitely thank you uh, very, very much. Um, I, I really appreciate it. You've got a, a wealth of knowledge. Um, which, by the way, I will be tapping into again. So, um, you know, we will definitely have you back on here again. Um, I want to thank you and, um, and looking forward to it. Um, and we have a further podcast that will be coming. Uh, maybe we can talk Legionella next time. Well, maybe we chat a little bit more about that, Norm. I think that would be a good idea. Sure. 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 All right. I, I want to like, thank, like um, thank you for inviting me to this. Um, I want to thank Bell and Gossett for the fine pressure boosters that they manufacture. And I'd like to reach out and thank the contractors and engineers who are listening for their business. We appreciate it and hopefully both Bell and & Gossett and RL Deppman company earn it every day. 
Thank you. Thanks, Norma. Appreciate it.